Okay, so in this problem we're told a crate is given an initial speed of 3 meters per second up the 25 degree plane shown in this figure. A. How far up the plane will it go? B. How much time elapses before it returns to its starting point? Assume mu sub k is equal to 0.17. So the first thing to do is to always understand what's going on here and to draw a picture. So we have this crate. We know it's on this 25 degree incline and it's going to be pushed with a velocity of 3 meters per second. And we're trying to find, for A at least, how far it's going to travel up this plane. So at some point it's going to get pushed, pushed, but then friction is going to push back against it and gravity, and it's going to stop and reach some point. And what we're trying to find is uh, that distance. So the distance, so imagine this is the crate, it's going to go up, let's say it stops here. We're trying to find this distance, delta x, is what I'm going to call it. So we're trying to basically find the change in the x, or how far it travels up. So basically, you should know that if we're solving for delta x, even though this is a force problem, we're going to use kinematics to solve for that part. So we're going to be using kinematics to solve that part. So the thing I always like to do is to write out all the kinematic variables and then determine uh, what we need to solve it. So the five main kinematic variables are delta x. And so keep in mind when I'm referring to x, I'm talking about this axis right here. So when you do force problems like this, you like to, or it's important to label your axis or axi. So basically these are our two axes. So this is x and this would be y. So x is parallel to your uh, plane of or your incline and y would be perpendicular to it. So whenever I refer to the x direction, just know I'm talking about everything along this plane and the y is perpendicular to that. Okay, cool. So the main variables are delta x, uh, v sub zero, and then since I'm talking about the x direction, we're working on the x, so I'm just going to label everything in the x. So v sub 0, x, v sub x, a sub x, and t. So we're trying to solve for delta x, or the change in this distance right here, as I said before. Uh, the initial velocity they tell us is 3 meters per second. But keep in mind that uh, we're going to be going to the left. So I'm actually going to label it uh, negative here, so minus 3 meters per second, because it's going uh, left. Uh, the final velocity is going to be 0 meters per second. The reason this is is because uh, it's going to where it stops. So at this point, it's going to be stopped. Therefore, its velocity is 0. Um, we don't know how long this is going to take. And so in order to solve a kinematic equation, you need three variables, which is why we're going to use forces in order to find the acceleration along this plane. And then we'll have the three in order to solve for delta x. So uh, now what we need to do is actually find the acceleration along this incline or when it gets pushed up. So how do we calculate that? So uh, what we're going to want to do is do a free body diagram of this box. That's the first thing you always like to do. Um, so yeah, so obviously we have the normal force, which acts perpendicular to the plane of in, uh, the incline. So it's going to point up like this. Uh, we also know we're going to have the force of friction, which is going to be this way. So force of friction. Uh, it's going to travel opposite to the way it travels, so I'm assuming it travels up like this. Um, so we have that, and then the final force is uh, the force due to gravity. So if you imagine gravity, it always points straight down like this. So this would be your FG. And then the thing you always like to do is label uh, every single component either in the Y or X. So notice our normal force is in the Y already, this way. F, the force of friction is in the x, but gravity is just somewhere in between. So we want to label its x component and its y component. So the way we do that is by drawing a triangle like this and splitting it up. So like that, and then like that. So since it's going, uh, this one's along the x, and this one's along the y, this is your fgy, y component of gravity, and this is your fgx, x component of gravity. So now we have every force labeled uh, along an axis. So the thing we want to do is sum the forces. So I know I'm going to be solving for A along the X, so I'm going to sum the forces in the X. So let me do that down here. So sum of the forces in the X is going to be, uh, be equal to MAX. So mass times acceleration in the X. So what we're going to be wanting uh, to solve for is this acceleration in the X because F equals MA. Okay, so we have MAX, and then we're going to want to add up the forces uh, in this. So force of friction is going to the right, and I'm going to call the right positive. So force of friction to the right, positive, and then FG of X is also positive. So we'll add up both of those. So M, 
AX equals uh, force of friction plus FG of X. So now that we've got that, uh, what we're going to want to do now is simplify this. So MAX equals, in the force of friction, is equal to mu sub K times F sub N. And this is the formula for it. So we're going to write that in plus FG of X. So the way you find FG of X, I'm going to just do this quick here. So imagine this right here is our triangle here. So this angle is the same, which is this angle right here is the same as the angle of incline. That's just a rule. And so 25 degrees. And then F sub G is your hypotenuse right here. And then this is your F G of X uh, along the X. And then this is your F G of Y. So to solve for F G of X, you do uh, the cosine of 25. So cosine, you should know, is opposite. Or sorry, not cosine. In order to find the X, you're going to use sine. Sorry about that. So we use sine. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite side is uh, fg of x, and the hypotenuse is f of g. So it's going to be opposite fg of x over fg. So to solve for fg of x, you just multiply both sides. So f of g is the force due to gravity, which is just equal to mg. So mg sine of 25 equals fg of x. So this is the what we would plug in. So mg sine of 25. That's going to be this. And then how do we find the normal force? So notice the normal force is in the Y. So to solve it, you sum the forces in the Y. The sum of the forces in the Y are going to be equal to zero because we don't move in the Y at all. We're only moving along this axis. So the velocity in the Y is zero, which makes acceleration zero. Therefore, A of Y would be zero, meaning this just equals zero. So zero is going to be equal to the sum of the forces in the Y, which are F sub N, and fg of y. Those are the only two in the y. If it's upwards, I'm going to call it positive. So f sub n and then minus fg of y because this is pointing downwards. So now that we got that, we need to find what fg of y is to find f sub n. So instead of using sine here, you do cosine for uh, fg of y. So uh, this is going to be equal to cosine is adjacent fg of y over hypotenuse f of g. So multiplying both sides by f of g, you're going to get fg cosine of 25 or mg cosine of 25. So moving fg to the other side, you get f sub n equals fg of y or, as we said, mg cosine of 25. So now what we can do is solve for ma, or we just got to plug it in now. So ma of x is equal to mu sub k times the normal force, which we just solved for, mg cos of 25, and then plus mg sine of 25. All I did was plug this value into this equation right here. So uh, now we've got that. To, to, you would just divide by m to solve for a of x. Plugging this in now, you want to plug in all your values. 0.17 is the coefficient of static or kinetic friction times its mass, which was, I don't believe they give us the value for it. Yes, yeah, so you don't actually have the value for M, but the way it works is, um, let me go back. I assume we have the value, so I was just going to plug it in. But when you divide by M here, it will cancel from each term here too. So essentially, you just can cancel them all out. So A sub X equals mu sub K 0.17 times G 9.8. That's just the acceleration due to gravity times the cos of 25 plus 9.8 sine of 25. So plugging this in, 0.17 times 9.8 times the cos of 25 plus 9.8 sine of 25. So you'll get a sub x equals 5.65, uh, one. So just let's just say eight or 5.65, uh, two actually. So this is going to be meters per second squared. And so now we have the acceleration to actually solve this here. So 5.652 meters per second squared. And now we can actually do the kinematic equation to solve for delta x. So uh, what we're going to do now is use this equation. V squared equals V sub 0 squared plus 2A times delta x. 
this is one of your kinematic equations. You should have it memorized. Uh, but the reason we're using this one is because we have all the variables to solve for delta x. So v is 0. 0 squared is still 0. The initial velocity is minus 3. Right, so minus 3 squared is just 9 plus 2 times a, 5.652. Multiplying that by delta x. Uh, so you would just minus this to the other side. And then multiply by delta x. So just divide by this now. So 2, point, or two times 5.652. And just divide. So minus 9 dividing by 2 times, and I'm using the exact value in my calculator, you're going to get delta x equals minus 0.796. Since we're dealing with dis uh, distance, we're using meters, since we use meters here. Uh, but yeah, so your change in position here is going to be minus uh, 0.796 meters. Uh, minus is just referring to the direction. So this way, we're going to change that much distance. So uh, we're changing this way 0.79 meters. So how far we go up the ramp is just equal to this value, but obviously it's not negative. So your answer would be how far up the plane will it go? It's going to go about, let's just say, or we'll just say 0.8 meters. Uh, you can round however you'd like, but we're going to go 0.8 meters up the ramp. Uh, but yeah, so that's going to be uh, your answer to A. And now what we can do is move on to uh, B. So let's go ahead and do that now. So for B, uh, we're going to be finding how much time elapses before it returns to its starting point. So we're trying to find the time it takes for it to go up to the top and all the way back down. So this is going to be split into two kinematic problems. Uh, the first problem we're going to have to solve for is the time it takes to go up. And then we're going to have to solve for the time it takes to go back down. So well, that's what we're going to have to solve for. Uh, the first thing we can do is just solve for the time it takes to get up here. The way we're going to do that is by using this and just solving for time. So uh, the only thing that changes is we're going to use t here. And yeah, so uh, because this, the, this interval here is how long it takes to go to the top. So we'll find the time it takes to go up, and then we're going to have to do a whole new problem to solve how long it took to go to the bottom and then add them up. Because if we add those, it'll give us the total time. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, you can basically use any, any kinematic equation that uses uh, time here. Uh, I'm going to use this one right here. V equals V sub 0 plus A times T. So we know the final velocity is 0. The initial, uh, sorry, the initial velocity is minus 3. And then plus uh, 5.652 and multiply it by T. So solving for this, you would add 3 to the other side. and then divide by this value. So plugging this in, five or three divided by, once again, I'm gonna use the exact value. You're gonna get T equals 0.531, so 0.531 seconds. That's how long it's gonna take um, for it to travel up. So now we just need to find how long it takes to travel down, and that's going to be a whole new problem. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. So once again, it's going to be kinematics to solve it on the way down. So I'm going to write out what variables we have and what we need to know in order to find this. So we're going to write given, and then let's write all our things out. So delta x, v sub 0 x, v sub x, a sub x, and t. So Obviously, the main thing we're solving for is time because we want to get the time it takes to travel down uh, and then we can add that to this value and it'll give us uh, the total time. So uh, we want to find time. What information do we know? Uh, from this point, its initial velocity is zero at this point. From this interval, the initial velocity is zero because at the top it's uh, not moving. So v sub zero x is zero meters per second. Um, we don't know the velocity it's going to be traveling when it's there, so we'll leave that out. Uh, we don't know that. Delta x, the distance it's going to travel, we do know because we know how long it, or how far up it went. It would just be this distance on the way down. Uh, keep in mind, it's going to be positive, though, because we're going to the right. So 0.796 meters, um, that's the change in the x. And then once again, notice we don't have the acceleration in the x, 
So we're going to have to solve for this in order to solve for t. So let's go ahead and redo the problem, but with uh, a sub x instead, or solving for a sub x. So I'm going to do a free body diagram again of what's going on. Um, so notice the force of friction, instead of acting this way now, it's going to be acting opposite direction. So it's going to be acting this way since we're traveling down. Normal force is the same direction, and then gravity is still the same mg, or I'll just call it f sub g again. And then we have the y and x still, and then fg of y. So once again, we're going to sum the forces in the x to solve for a of x. Let's go ahead and do that. So let me do it over here, actually. So sum the forces in the x equal ma again, x again, because f equals ma. And then max equals, let's add the forces up in the x. So the thing that changes about this is now force of friction is pointing to the left. So it's now negative, but gravity is still going to be positive since this is still pointing this way. So plus fg of x, which we determined, this doesn't actually change. It's still mg sine of 25. So if you need to know how we got that, just go back in the video, watch the circle, or sorry, the triangle. And uh, yeah, so max equals minus the force of friction. So minus mu sub k times f sub n. Uh, notice f sub n again is the same value. It doesn't change. Still mg cos of 25. So you can look back to see how we got that too, if you need. Uh, plus mg sine of 25. But cool. So now what we would do again is divide by m. Keep in mind, this is one whole thing. So the m's will just cancel on both sides. So gone, gone, gone. So your acceleration in this case is equal to minus mu sub k. I'll write it out again. Times g times the cos of 25 plus g sine of 25. So uh, we just got to plug in our values now. So minus mu sub k. We know the coefficient of kinetic friction is still 0.17. That doesn't change. Make sure my minus sign is there. We have g, which is the acceleration due to gravity. That's still 9.8 times the cosine of 25 plus 9.8 sine of 25. So solving this, minus 0.17 times 9.8 times the cos of 25 plus 9.8 sine of 25. And so what you're going to find is that the acceleration a sub x is equal to 2.6317, uh, or we'll just say 2.632 meters per second squared. And yeah, so... That's going to be that. Now what we're going to want to do is uh, plug it back in here. So we have 2.631. Uh, what was it again? Sorry, 2.632. Sorry about that. Meters per second squared. So notice that it's actually a positive value, which means we're still accel accelerating downwards, uh, which makes sense because we start from zero. So obviously we have to move. Um, so the, the, the force due to gravity is actually carrying this hard. Um, but yeah, so now we have A. Uh, we can just solve for uh, T. Uh, which one are we going to use? The equation, uh, I recommend using this one. Delta X equals V sub 0 X T plus 1 half A sub X T squared. So hopefully you remember your uh, kinematic equations, but we're going to use this one right here. Okay, and so now what we're going to do is just plug in the values. Um, so we're solving for t here, so delta x is 0 0.796 is equal to the initial velocity. This is just 0, so 0 times anything is 0, plus 1 half. a sub x is 2.632, uh, multiplying that by uh, t squared. So we have 0 0.796 is equal to 1 half times this. Let me just calculate that real quick. I'm using the exact value from my calculator. So 1.316 uh, uh, we'll say times t squared. So you would divide by this value here since we're trying to solve for t. 
and then just square root it in order to get rid of that, uh, in order to get rid of the square on that side. So you're going to take the square root of 0.796 divided by that value. So 1.3, uh, whatever. And you'll get point t equals 0.7777 repeating. Uh, I'm just going to say it equals 0.778. And so keep in mind this is seconds, but this is how long it's going to take uh, for it to travel down now. So that's going to be that. Uh, and so keep in mind what this t was. This is how long it took for it to for it to go from here all the way back to the starting point. So to find the total time taken, we take the time it takes to go up and then add it to the time we just found it takes to go down. So adding this value to this value, you're going to get that it equals 1.308 uh, so you can just say that it equals about 1.3 seconds. Or you can say 3, 1, however you want to round. It doesn't really matter. But it's going to take about 1.3 seconds for it to travel down. So uh, your answer to B is how much time elapses uh, before it returns to its starting point, 1.3 seconds. And then is your answer to A, how far it travels up the incline. But yeah, so these are going to be your answers. And hopefully you found this video helpful.